Hello everyone, so I will try to teach uh, Blender uh, from basically from scratch so you don't know anything about 3D software so I'm gonna like hold your hand through all of it you know first part is you need to download Blender of course go to this link I'll try to link this in the description when you first load it up you should see a screen like this but um, at times you can just click anywhere and it will disappear and you'll never see that screen again so don't worry about that we can just go over here to edit preferences and go to key map and it basically shows the same thing or not quite but basically um, I want my space of our action to be tools you can press play if you're an animator but we're not gonna animate anything of course the basics movement is middle mouse button for orbiting around an object um, scroll wheel for zooming in and out or um, sometimes you can also use middle mouse button and control so um, that's for zooming in and out then for panning is shift plus middle mouse button uh, but you don't need to like worry about that when you want to first learn blender I want you to focus on um, being able to use it as a tool in your workflow as fast as possible and trying to learn the movement is a really really difficult skill to learn right now so I just recommend to use these gizmos on the top right where you can um, click over here and drag to orbit around the scene click this one to zoom in and out click this one to pan the scene and this is for the camera and toggling panoramic view or orthographic view next thing is manipulation or object manipulation so here um, I have this cube selected I can press G to move it or I can press R to rotate it I can press S to scale it so G is for grabbing then R is for rotating then S is for scaling um, but you also don't need to learn any of those I recommend going over here and clicking on this one so this is a gizmo right this this is a gizmo where everything is like seen um, right here on the viewport so you can click this one if you want to scale on the z-axis you can click this one on the y scaling on the z or i mean x then if you click on the arrow instead of the box it will grab it and if you click on these like circles uh it will rotate it to cancel an action you just need to press right click and you can also press um undo to undo all of your changes so there's that there's a con there's a transform but you can also choose to just show the move just show the rotate or the scale controls that also works all right so now that you know how to manipulate objects um modeling and texturing is like a whole nother science that i don't think i can teach you right now but i still want you to be able to come out of here with a good render or like a workable render that maybe you can use for your work or your for your um personal um scenes or whatever so we're gonna skip all of that and do what we call kit bashing and kit bashing is um, the concept of taking other people's models or models that have been created by other people or m maybe by you uh, at a previous time and just uh, mishmashing them into one complete scene by using like individual parts so let me show you what i mean so i'm gonna put this i'm gonna open this blend file i'll put this blend file also in the description um this is made by this, I got this model from Sketchfab, so I'll I'll try to credit um, the modeler um, right somewhere around the screen. But if I click and drag this, um, I can select open and don't save because you know we we didn't really do anything in the default scene. Don't save, and now it's gonna open um, this scene right here. So uh, I'm just gonna recenter myself. You can recenter yourself by uh, pressing the tilde key and going to view selected or um, you can press f3 then um, view selected uh, pretty much the same thing then um, you can see that uh, over here on the top right there are um, there are what we call collections and these are kind of like groups so if i turn on one you can't really see it it's over here so i'm gonna select something over there then go to view selected so we can zoom in on them so we have some barrels here i can go to solid view or material preview i also did what i just did 
by pressing Z. So that's that's how you can change the view. You can also change your view over here on the top right. So most of the things that I'm doing with shortcuts can be done over here on the top right or over here on like the left side. So yeah. So I'm gonna go back to solid view and I'll try to turn all of these on. So you can see we have actually lots of models that we can play around with and they're actually pretty well made. So if I go to material view, um, we have some nice little trees, some great walls and like um, fences, great rubble, um, different types of uh, fences. So this is um, a wooden fence, a spiky fence uh, for that matter. And this is also a bunch of houses that we can use to build our own scene. So um, I can just um, select all of these by um, clicking and dragging. Also, if you can't click and drag, maybe you've changed this to something else. So maybe it's a select circle or it's a select lasso, but I recommend select box then. Or also if this is, um, if that thing disappeared, you just press T and it comes back again. Or you just click this little arrow and you can drag it out. So now um, I can click all of this or I can sh select all of it. But you can see that um, I'm selecting other parts that I don't want. So I can just, uh, the same way I would select like layers in Photoshop. I can select one, then shift click um, the others. And now I can go to move tool, then, you know, manipulate them. I can rotate them. I can scale them. So I am like free to manipulate now at this point. But since this is like the kit bash like source i don't want to like change any of these because i want to have a backup for like the models so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate it and you do that by shift d so by pressing shift d uh, i'm gonna do it again by pressing shift d uh, i'm already in like move tool mode or grab mode but i can just press right click go to move tool then move it to a place where i actually want them to go um maybe over here also i have a camera setup over here so i can just um go here on the camera view and see that i al i already have this like um really interesting looking scene by just you know placing models around this place so maybe i can make say a street i'm gonna duplicate this again but i'm gonna rotate it now so we have like multiple rows of houses now we already have like a village then maybe we can set just some things maybe we can look for some um objects that we can use to set just the scene maybe these objects right here duplicate it then move it around move it over here uh you can see that this move tool um i'm sure you can see so like there's three arrows but there's also like little squares so there's a little blue square a green square and a red square and i usually just use the blue square that way i can move it on two axes at once without it going up or down because you know it's planted on the ground so i can just do that for um these parts i'm I'm constantly like going over to selecting this uh, with the view selected when I'm like rotating my view around. That way I don't, um, when I move this outside the screen, I can just quickly go back to it, right? So I'm going to put this over here and look at my camera. You can also select your camera over here on the same um, tilde key or grave key. So you can select the view camera and it will show this, um, this view right here. And oh, also. If you want to rotate stuff, um, oh, you can do this, you know, of course. But if you want it to snap to 90 degrees, you can press control and it will, you can see on the top left, it will snap to the nearest, like nearest divisible by five. So I can snap it to 90 degrees or snap it to something like this. Move it again. Gonna move this now. So now I'm gonna just use shortcuts for now since I'm just set dressing the things. But of course you can do what I'm doing with, um, you know the gizmo controls and like the things over here but um for the sake of demonstration i'm just gonna use my keyboard shortcuts for this one and then maybe i want a blacksmith house to be somewhere here uh what's a good blacksmith prop maybe huh, maybe also a well um some campfire street signs um a scaffolding that's also cool now i duplicate it Move it over here, okay. move it over here, move it over here, wait this, uh, move it nearer to the camera, you can't really see it, maybe, maybe some, we're over here, go to 90 degrees, add some scaffolding on this area, rotate it, okay. So now we have like 
an already interesting looking scene full of life you know full, like looks pretty lived in lots of different props um it already tells like a wonderful like believable medieval story by just you know using these environment props and we didn't even do any modeling whatsoever so that's like the power that i want to show regarding um regarding 3d because a lot of it is just just utilizing objects that that are good enough for um for like a 3d render because as to the artists our goal isn't necessarily to have like a wonderful render right because we can do that on our own we can like sketch we can paint our own stuff um without the use of 3d but um with perspective and with everything right here because this uh, this is a really really dense like um scene right and um applying uh perspective rules perspective grids on this type of scene is actually gonna take like a really long time to do so that's why using um what you can um uh, and using 3d to make that process a little less daunting a little less um tedious it's actually a really really um great way to save time on um creating your artworks so right now i i'm fairly happy with this i'm fairly okay with the composition maybe i can move these to the front a bit maybe something like that and now uh, i'll try to render but you can see if i go to the render view actually you, you don't really need to render this since you can just you know take a screenshot then you're good to go put that on um put that on put that on krita or photoshop paint over it doesn't really matter right um you're already there's lots of information here that's already way useful for you as a 2d artist but um if you want to have say the line art of this we can, we can actually do that so um so this is kind of like a bonus tip so you can stop right here the, the tutorial is almost like over anyway but if you want to have say a line art of this entire scene what i'm gonna do is zoom all the way out um what i'm doing also when i when i'm snapping to like these types of views is i'm pressing alt while i'm pressing the middle mouse button so when i go to this axis it's gonna snap to that um front or top view so anyway i'm gonna zoom all the way out select all of these things inside like this plane then i'm gonna put them inside a collection so i'm gonna um, press m and move to a new collection you can name it if you want but right now they're now inside this group so they're not inside this group anymore so we can actually turn this off and now um our entire scene is inside this group so we can add a new one we can add uh grease pencil where is that we can add grease pencil and collection line art and what that's going to do make sure you you're inside this collection or actually yeah, yeah, yeah. we can just go over here uh, on this line art object um drag this up to see to see its properties then go over here on the collection and se um select this collection 13 then go to um go to your like camera view and you can see that it already has like line art so this is really really wonderful for comics for webtoons stuff like that because you can just extract the line art from here and you know go straight into coloring or rendering but yeah anyway um another final tip is if i if i go to render view um we can still see like um it's really dark so we can add a we can add the light a sun lamp then um <clears throat> angle the light to whatever angle i want so maybe something like that so we can get those like interesting shadows and maybe make this a bit brighter make it a bit yellow yellow or a bit orange now it's like it's slightly better but you know the the lighting is still can still be improved but you know that's more about like after the fact when you've done when you've transferred this into Krita and your painting software and that's about it you can save um this seed so yeah i've saved it now and if you want to want if you don't want to screenshot this and actually have this like wonderful render um you can just press f12 or go over here on render render image then it's gonna takes a bit of time then it will spit this one out so you can um go to image save as um save this image put it on krita um, paint over it draw over it like what was that we've only spent like around 20 minutes and you've already made like a really wonderful medieval scene 
um, full of like believable props and um, set dressing and um, buildings uh, instead of like doing all of that in 2D which takes a lot of time to do properly and the great thing about this since it's in 3D is I can actually change the camera so if I go to camera view and I press shift tilde key or shift um, grave key you can see oh okay so um, I won't recommend that because um, there's still a line art um, there's still a line art modifier which is um, based on camera so we need to turn that off first because it's gonna lag our whole viewport but now if I select the camera go to camera view and shift tilde key you can see that um, we're like in um, we're in like in FPS mode so it's like um, you press WASD you can see the controls on the bottom WASD forward backward left right E is up and Q is down you press space to teleport to a specific point in your scene and you can just move around just like it's a game right so you can choose your camera angle this way if you want so if you want say a more establishing shot you can choose maybe this kind of shot where you see a lot of it or if you want say a, a more um, daunting view you can <clears throat> use say you can do a uh, worm's eye view and highlight a specific building make it look menacing and imposing something like this then you can turn on the um the line art again so i'm gonna select the line art object collection um select the collection 13 because that's where our collection is and now it has line art then we render it then we put that into photoshop or whatever then you know I, that's about it um hope this helps i'll try to do more of these things um in the future you know um feature different scenes and whatever so right now we did like a medieval one maybe later on we can do a sci-fi one or more modern one like an urban modern city um things like that uh, depends on the models that i can find that are, that we can actually use if you're watching this from the future i probably have way more videos like this one so if you're interested in making more of these for your artworks um you can go click here um well, which will take you to a playlist of the different models and scenes that we can make with the models that i've found and as well as you know other interesting 3d methods that you can use for your 2d artwork and that's about it so hope you learned something and thanks for watching bye bye